Welcome to the Short Story Podcast. My name is Stefan Lösch, and I'll be talking to you about the economics of Bitcoin mining today. The background. In a few days, there will be the halving of the Bitcoin reward, meaning that uh, the Bitcoin reward will by, drop by almost half of uh, what it used to be. And the question is, what will this do? Now, in today's agenda, we're going to talk about the microeconomics of this. But before we do go to the macroeconomics of Bitcoin mining, we're looking at the classic microeconomic analysis of uh, supply versus demand, because this, and in particular the cost curve that is going with this, is an excellent tool to, um, to deal with, uh, with these kind of issues. So the agenda, point one, the halvening we already have done uh, very briefly. Point two, we're going to talk about in a second. And then finally, we're going to move on to the economics of Bitcoin mining proper. The microeconomic supply demand analysis is probably the most fundamental tool in microeconomics. So if you have studied microeconomics 101, then clearly you have seen this before. Now I will go through it relatively quickly. So um, if you don't understand it and you have never seen it, don't be too worried. This is more meant as a reminder for people who already have seen it. And uh, so that Bitcoin mining has a proper frame of reference for this. So the, um, the classic macroeconomic supply and demand analysis starts with either supply curve or the demand curve. We're going to start with the demand curve. The demand curve is uh, drawn in the following way. The unit price is on the y-axis and the quantity is on the x-axis. This might be a little bit surprising because one would think that the quantity is a function of the price, but well, this is just flipped and there are some reasons for it that we discuss when we talk about the cost curve. Now, the key thing about the demand curve is that generally it is downward sloping because um, the more expensive a good get, good, good gets, uh, the fewer people actually want, uh, want to have it. So demand curve is downward sloping. Now, supply curve is in the same chart. Y-axis is the unit price, X-axis is the quantity. Now, the supply curve is upward sloping. Now, why it is upward sloping? Well, again, the higher the price, the more people deliver. However, there's a second reason. The way you obtain the supply curve in equilibrium in a commodity market is you look just at all the producers and you look at their production cost at their marginal production cost. And essentially the idea is that every producer is willing to sell at their production cost plus possibly a small markup. But uh, there doesn't necessarily need to be a small markup if there is a profit anyway. So the lowest price that a producer who is in the market who's already in the market uh, would be accept is his marginal production cost. Now on the supply curve, on the cost curve, what you do is you look at all the producers, you sort them by the marginal production cost, the producers with um, the lowest marginal production cost go to the left, the one with the highest production cost go to the right. And this is why quantity is on the x-axis in this diagram, because otherwise you would have to sort the producers from, uh, from bottom to top, and that's a little bit awkward. So it makes much more sense to go uh, from left to right there. So then you put the supply and the demand chart together, and lo and behold, they generally meet, i.e. there is a combination of price and demand where uh both uh, both the supply and demand price and quantity match this is called the market clearing price why is this called the market clearing price it is because all the goods produced are uh, taken up by um i by taken bias so the, there's a clearing quantity and there is a clearing price now 
the area under the well the, the area shown here in this chart the area under the clearing price is by definition the um, the total revenues because it is the quantity times the price per unit which by definition gives the revenues the area under the cost curve again by definition or by construction is the total cost to the producers so you see the cost is uh, more on the right hand side that is on the left hand side because this is where you put the higher cost producers and if the rectangle is the um, is the total revenues and the tr below triangle is the cost then obviously uh, what remaining the party in green is the um, is the profit so that's really all about uh, th 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 that's all about that there is um, about this basic supply and demand chart and now we're going to look at how this works with uh, with bitcoin mining and how the microeconomics of bitcoin mining work so what we're going to see is there is a different um, demand curve the demand curve is a reward curve in this case but what is exactly the same is the cost curve and this is not surprising because arguably providing hash power is the ultimate commodity a hash is a hash you can buy a hash wherever you want to buy it so a chinese hash is the same as an american hash is the same as your hash from the united kingdom so before we go on this analysis i just want to make one definition which is the end miner s2 equivalent hash rate the units on this particular um, chart are a little bit uh, confusing because the volume is not measured in liters or in kilowatt hours or something like this but the volume is uh, measured in hashes per second and this just gets a bit confusing when you talk about it so i'm going to define one ant miner is two equivalent ant miner is two being one of the really early mining units as one tera hash per second because that was its nominal output so this makes things much much more unit um uh, intuitive because when I'm talking about um, 500 and minor is two equivalents, uh, then you really know, well, you can get this power by getting 500 and minor is two there and having them work, or you can give more newer and faster machines that can do the same thing at a lower, um, at a lower cost. But it's much more intuitive than talking about a certain amount of tera hash per second. All right, so the mining cost and reward chart is similar to the supply demand chart that we have just seen in microeconomics um, on the x-axis this is really the same on the x-axis is the product volume the product volume here being the s2 equivalent hash rate because as we said this is what the miners are selling um, and on the y-axis is the unit price and the unit price because the continuous product it's a unit per 10 minutes 10 minutes being uh, one block time and so the price we express in bitcoin because well that's a natural unit uh, that's a natural unit for this so on the y-axis the price is effectively bitcoin per s2 equivalent hash rate per 10 minutes so this is our basic mining cost reward chart um, instead of a demand curve it has a reward curve where we plot the mining reward in bitcoin again this was our exit per and minor s2 equivalent per 10 minutes so if you provide one volume of hash power one and my s2 how much money do you make of this in 10 minutes um, in average now it is very easy to see what this curve is we can actually calculate this as opposed to the microeconomics case where you have to estimate this here we can literally calculate it um, if you're the only end miner who is in this particular thing then well you get 100 percent of the mining reward so if they're one end miner and you are have the the end miner then the mining reward is uh 100. If there are two end miners out there 
and you have one, your mining reward in average is half the block reward. If there are 100 end miners out there and you have one of them, your mining reward is one hundredth of this, etc. So the mining reward curve is simply 1 over x, or it is uh, the percentage of one unit of mining here, one end miner in uh, as the overall uh, percentage of the active mining pool. So remember, the x-axis here is the active mining pool. The volume provide the volume measure that we have is how many miners are active. It's not how many miners are out there in the market, but how many miners are actually active doing stuff. Now here, then we do the mining cost curve. And the mining cost curve is exactly the same thing as in the, um, as in the market economics case. Uh, I have drawn it here as a step function, um, indicating that at each step is one particular miner who is using one electricity price um, and one particular hardware. So obviously, in reality, these steps are pretty small, but uh, it's worth remembering that sort of one of these units is one uh, one miner. Again. Uh, like in the macroeconomics case, the mining cost and the reward chart, they meet. And there is, uh, uh, there is a clearing point. The clearing point is where the mining reward at a given hash, hash rate is equal to the mining cost at, um, at the same hash rate. So why is this called the clearing, uh, clearing rate? Well, because this decides how what the what the take up is of the mining because we know on the left hand of this uh, all miners on the left hand the wall the ones here shown in green they are all happy because the what they get is more uh, is better than uh, than their cost so they're making money um, those on the right hand side they don't make money so which means that they are simply not mining and there's sort of the guy in the middle who, well, he doesn't make money, but he doesn't lose money. So he is, uh, well, he either mines or not, it doesn't really matter. He's a marginal guy sitting in the middle. So again, we're doing exactly the same analysis that we have done before. So the total mining revenues, and remember, they are the block reward. They are the surface indicated here, i.e. the rectangle that is uh, bounded by the origin um, on the one hand and, uh, and the clearing point on the other. Well, why is this the case? Remember, the red curve, the reward curve, was total mining reward divided by the mining capacity, was a 1 over x. Now, we multiply the whole thing with x because that's the uh, horizontal axis here. And if you put them both together, then we're going to get back the total mining reward. Again, the cost that the miners incur for mining is the surface under the mining cost curve. So the blue area that is shaded here and the, um, the, the, the profit, the total mining profit that they make is the area that is shaded in green here, which is the area above the chart up to the point. We can also do this analysis uh, based for, for, for a single miner. So we're just looking at one of those steps. So the reward is the, the, the area shaded uh, here that uh, that corresponds to the exact uh, mining capacity that this miner has and at the, at, the, at the right cost and again we can separate this into um uh, into a cost part which is a part below the curve and the part above the curve so coming back we remove the steps because that's, uh, again, how we show the supply demand chart. In reality, these steps are going to be really, really small. So if you want to do a microeconomic analysis of Bitcoin mining, what we do, we are drawing up this uh, cost reward chart. For this, we need an estimate of the mining cost. 
Um, and that's really it. We need to have the cost curve of the mining cost. We don't need to estimate the um, equivalent of the sim de um, demand curve because this is what is called uh, the reward curve here, and this is fixed. Now, this concludes this session uh, for today because we're already at, uh, at 15 minutes and uh, I don't want to make it much longer. Um, and in the next session, we're going to talk about halvening and we're going to talk more generally about how you can actually use these curves to understand sensitivities and to understand the impact of what is happening um, when certain parameters change, like the Bitcoin price when it changes, the electricity price when it changes, um, when foreign exchange rates change, and when the block reward halves. This can all be done graphically at the uh, with this particular chart. So now all the rest of me is thanking you for watching the video, and I hope you don't tune in again uh, the next time.